Hi everyone, it's Reva. I'm back on the couch with my pictures and my globe. And before we start today, I thought it would be important to introduce you to my new assistant who's been helping me out here in our um, remote location of our school's library. Um, and her name is Comet and she's um, very cute. Let's see, give me baby. Oh, there she is. Look, sweetie, can you look at the camera? This is Comet. She is a mostly Maine Coon kitten that we got at the Berkeley Humane Society. And she's um, gonna be one on April 1st, so we're gonna give her a nice treat cake. And she does not like to snuggle and play these reindeer games. She, oh, look at her face. She's very, very fierce and protects us from predators. And look at her cute little paws. Do you see she has little white paws? Can you smile at the camera, sweetie? Ooh, you, you, boo, boo. She's still a kitten, but her breed of cat is very large, so she's pretty big. Can you say hi? Hi, everybody. Okay, I'm gonna let her go. She's not a lap cat. I really wish she was a lap cat. It'd be nice if she wanted to snuggle, but um, I hear that when cats get a little older, sometimes they change from kittens who don't want to be lap cats to cats that are more snuggly. So, fingers crossed that our cat's gonna get more snuggly. Um, today we're gonna read a picture book and it's a nonfiction picture book. Raise your hand if you remember what nonfiction is. Yeah, that's right. That means it's a true fact book. That means that it's about something real and it gives you true information. And this one's a biography. And we remember that a biography means it's about a person's life. Um, so this one's called, the Flying Girl, How Aida de Acosta Learned to Soar by Margarita Engel, illustrated by Sara Palacios. Now listen, this doesn't take place recently. This takes place kind of long ago. Can you tell by the clothing and by that contraption she's in that it takes place long ago? It's not way on the ground. Oh, it's little children. Cute. Um, yeah, this takes place, this is about something that happened in 1903. So if you wanna do the math on that, it's 2020 minus 1903. I think that means it's 117 years ago. So let's find out about Aida de Acosta. She was one of the, well, actually she was the very first woman to pilot a mechanical flying thing. And you might think, what about Amelia Earhart? She was the first pilot to go across the ocean. This wasn't an airplane. This was something different. Let's find out what it was. So here we go. The Flying Girl. Ooh, end papers. Look how pretty. Pretty buildings and birds. These look like pretty houses. Okay, pretty end papers. Here's our title page. The what? The Flying Girl, How Aida de Acosta Learned to Soar. Margarita Engel, Sarah Palacios. Here we go. Nope, oh, copyright page. When was it published? Look for that little C. 2018, two years ago. Here we go. First, I'll give you the overview from far back. Ooh. We are actually in, I believe, Paris on this page. It says, let's see how I can figure this out. Here we go. One day, a girl named Aida was strolling on a lively street in a lovely city when she glanced up and was dazzled by the sight of a huge balloon that glided as gracefully as a whale-shaped moon. Below the balloon, an airboat dangled, and inside, there was a man. See it? Look at that. This is a real thing. This is a true fact book. He's just right out there. There's no walls around him, huh? If he was scared. If that man can fly, so can I, cried Aida. All I need are some lessons and a chance to try. Aida's mother scolded, 
No, 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 silly girl. Don't be so bold. I, I, I. No one will ever marry a girl who dares to fly. Look at her mother saying, <gasps> No! Her mother's family was from Mexico and her father's family were from Cuba. But they lived in the United States. But Aida had a dream now, a wild dream of soaring, and she did not care to marry anyone who thought dreams were boring. She's dreaming. She's thinking about that airship. Let's see how these dudes look. Hello. Ooh, look at this. So Aida asked the man to teach her the art of airship flight. The inventor of airships, whose name was Alberto, agreed to show Aida how to start a motor and steer, turn left, turn right. Lessons on the ground weren't easy, but Aida worked hard and soon learned how to pull the lever, tug the rope, drop more ballast, believe, practice, hope. There's a lot of simple machines at work there for those of you who have studied that. Look at her on the ground, practicing in this contraption. Sitting there, not in the air yet, just practicing on the ground. Oh, look at this. Try to figure that out before I read this. What is happening? Let's see. One evening, Alberto invited Aida to an aerial dinner with tables as tall as elephants served by waiters who walked on tilted stilts that made them look like silly giraffes. What? At dinner, Alberto said that his airships were meant to be chariots of peace so that people all over the world could meet one another and develop friendships by flying back and forth. So he hosted this dinner to tell people about it. And he tried to get them all up in the air to, to think about what it would be like to be able to fly. Look at that. Can you imagine if your dining table looked like that? And you had stairs up to the table? That would be kind of fun, maybe. Unless you fell down. Ooh, what's happening here, do you think? When Alberto invited Aida to ride while he drove an airship, she cried, no, 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 I, 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 I won't be a passenger. I only want to be the pilot. Alberto was amazed. Aida was just a teenager. She was 19 years old and no woman or girl had ever flown before, but no one had believed Alberto's wild dream of motorized flight could come true either. Not until he invented his airship. So Alberto realized that if he could fly, Aida could too. All she needed was courage and a chance to try. All right, she's going to do it. What? Ah! On a clear summer day, Aida finally had her thrilling chance to pull this lever, tug that rope, drop more ballast, believe, rise up, hope. Look at her. She doesn't look scared. Do you think she's scared? Look at her. There's no walls. There's no door. She's just sitting up there. Do you think there's even a seatbelt? I don't know. Those kids looking out their window. Like a whale-shaped moon, the airship's enormous balloon soared above the busy city and out to the countryside. It sailed over green farms and cows and sheep, high above the heads of excited children who cried out, look, look, it's a girl and she's flying. Look at these kids. They're like, she's flying. Look at the baby. Look at that. And the mom, that's what I would look like if I was Aida's mom. Oh my goodness, be careful. But she's doing it. From her dangling air home, 
air home, air boat. Aida smiled down at the children, but then she frowned at Alberto, who was on a road far below, frantically pedaling his bicycle and waving a handkerchief as he tried to show her which way to go, even though she had already told him that she did not need help because she had practiced. She's like, uh, I got this, dude. I got this. Don't need 